Well, first of all, thank you to the Dr. Manjekar and his son Surab for the kind invitation to talk about, about the race to net zero carbon concrete in Mexico. Uh, I, I would like to talk what we are doing in the concrete industry in Mexico because much of the concrete producer, we are thinking that the, the, the key for the net zero emissions concrete is in the cement, and it's right. The cement is, is, is guilty about the 90% of the CO2 emissions in concrete, but we are, the concrete producers, we are expecting that the cement side solve uh, this problem. And uh, I would like to present you what we are doing from the ready mix concrete side to decrease the CO2 emissions in, in, in concrete. So we're trying to accelerate the world transition to a sustainable concrete, um, trying to build a world, a world with a lower carbon emissions, with clean energy, with alternative water, and zero waste. Uh, most of the time we are talking about CO2 in carbon, but we are not talking about the other issues that are related to the concrete. So uh, for us, we are trying to take into account and leave the, the, the issues about the cement for the cement industry. So first of all, we're trying to uh, make a commitment to establish some uh, targets and goals to take us to the ambition we have to 2050. So the first uh, targets that we establish or we are trying to establish in, in, in Mexico with the concrete industry is to 2030. Uh, first of all, expecting that the cement side can decrease their CO2 emissions per ton of cementation products by 47%. So uh, later we will see the target that we have in, con in concrete for those years. But to get tho those targets, we need that the cement side do their work. So also for 2030, we are expecting to use 65% of power consumption for clean energy sources. Uh, not in cement, in concrete. And for 2050, to deliver the net zero CO2 concrete globally. Well, in this case, in Mexico. So these targets and these goals go aligned to ma many of the international organizations and commitment like science-based target, which made an evaluation and analysis that the targets that we are setting, and they could say, if the targets are right and if it's possible to reach them. So we are trying to, to set these, these targets aligned with this uh, commitment. So we are trying to uh, organize the efforts and the strategies in six pillars. Each of one has a target and allow us to organize us between the, all the concrete producers in Mexico and trying to uh, effort or I'm, I'm put the effort especially in, in those uh, themes. The, the first one is the sustainable product solutions. We are trying to uh, set clearly the products that has some sustainable attributes, trying to not get into the greenwashing. So we are trying to uh, leave clearly which concrete has sustainable attributes or not, and which one are helping to the buildings and the construction industry. The second one is the decarbonizing the operation, the concrete operation. So we are trying to use alternative fuels. Alternative fuels for a concrete plant is the diesel, for example, that use the, the mixer trucks. We are trying to convert them into uh, vehicles using uh, natural gas and uh, we hope soon electric ones. Uh, we are trying to demand to our cement uh, suppliers to use uh, blended cement instead of ordinary cements. We are trying to take out from our market the type 1 cement, the ordinary cement, and just use blended cement. So we are almost in the target of use 100% of blended cement, and we are working with the standards to leave all the, all, all the requisite that the cements must comply to be uh, uh, competitive as a type one cement. 
The third pillar is a focus on circular economy. We are uh, trying to put our production and consumption model focus on reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, for example, I don't know if you have our colleague from France is still here, no. Well, uh, in the morning uh, from France, uh, what the, the, the colleague was telling us the use of the alternative aggregates. So we are trying to foster and push the use of recycled aggregates, even artificial aggregates. There is uh, now some aggregates which are made from the, uh, the recycle, uh, difficult recycle plastics. So we are trying to recycle into artificial aggregates. It's the same form, some plastic pellets that made from, uh, for example, chip bags or all that kind of envelopes of the snacks and uh, cookies and all of those plastics, they are very difficult to recycle. So there is companies that are recycling and convert them into, into aggregates. So we are trying to foster the use of um, recycled concrete and artificial aggregates. In the pillar of water and biodiversity, uh, we are focused a little bit more on water. So we are trying to replace all the fresh water we use in concrete, not just for the concrete, and uh, also for the activities and services that we made in the ready mix plants. For example, the washing of the trucks, uh, the, the water we put into the aggregates on the yards, in the, in the, in the roads, etc., etc. We are trying to take the rejected water from other industries, for example, the, the beverage industry, they drop a lot of water into the drainage. So that water is almost uh, bottled water. So the quality is, is very, very good. So they don't know that in the concrete industry we use water. So it's just a matter of communication and we're taking those water to, to produce our concrete. There is another sources of alternative water. There is the, 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 the rain water, the recycled water that we can make inside our, our concrete plants. And well, there is the treated water from municipal uh, plants also. Mm -hmm. In the fifth pillar, we're trying to uh, find some partners that has knowledge that we haven't. We recognize that we are experts and in fabricate or produce cement to produce concretes and evaluate all the, the, the possibilities that we can use concrete. But we don't have the expertise to explore another kinds or another types of produce cement or produce concrete. So we are trying to, to look for those partners that, uh, that that, that, that could uh, comply with the uh, requisite that we have and, and, and the issues that we have not solved to eliminate the CO2 emissions from the, our raw materials principally. So we are exploring, for example, to produce cement with solar energy, uh, to produce the clinker with solar energy, or we are trying to see if we can produce some other soft products from the CO2 uh, emitted by the uh, cement and concrete production, or even we are trying to see how can we use the concrete as, as, a, as a battery for, for, for the energy, for the clean energy. Mm -hmm. And the last pillar is promotion on green economy, and is focused on, 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 on develop the documents and the laws and the standards that allows the new technologies can deploy into the markets. Because nowadays we realize that there is a lot of architects or structural engineers or even developers or owner that they are afraid to use the new technologies because they don't have any background about new technologies. So if uh, some local standard or some local law doesn't mention these technologies, they don't want to use it. So we are trying to leave the documents with the, uh, enough information that give the confidence to the users to use new, this new kind of technologies. Mm -hmm. Well, um, another uh, effort that we are focusing on is 
the site, the, 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 the concrete plant. What can we do in our concrete plants? Well, we're trying, and some of these uh, uh, issues uh, was mentioned in, in, in our efforts, in, the, in our program, the Future in Action have, is uh, we, ha we must have concrete plants with 100% free of, free of uh, fresh water. We have to ensure that the facilities hasn't any dust. We have to the, uh, implement environmental management systems. We need to replace our vehicles. We need to eliminate all the waste that we generate in our concrete plants. And we must provide our plants with uh, technologies that could produce our own energy to, 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 to work, like uh, solar plants, like uh, uh, and other facilities to treat the rejected or the return concrete that we have from the projects. And we can treat all, all, those, uh, all the waste that generate in the plant to use it again in the, in the production of, of uh, concrete. I will give you some examples that we have reached until now. For example, uh, using alternative water, we, uh, since in Mexico we start to use in this type of water, we have been reduced more than uh, two billion liters of drinking water uh, with, this, uh, with this type of water. As you may know, uh, Mexico geographically is located in a, a high, extremely uh, water stress. So most of the territory is, uh, has uh, water scarcity. So for the industry, it's very important to have access to the water for uh, operation continuity. It's not only for the people who live in the communities, for the business, it's very important to get access to alternative uh, water. So nowadays, um, there, 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 maybe in Mexico, there must be like a 500 ready mix concrete plants uh, in all the brands, all, uh, all, all, all the participants in the, in the market. So right now we have like a 55 concrete plants using 100% alternative water, it's like a 10%. But uh, through the years, we have been increasing the quantity of this kind of water. For example, if uh, some of you heard about uh, the crisis in one of the largest cities in Mexico, which is Monterrey, two years ago, they have a water, a severe water scarcity. The water wasn't available for the people, and the authorities uh, start to rational the rationalize the water for the f for the people uh, m in some areas of Monterrey they get the water just once a month so it it, it was a, a, a very important crisis in Monterrey and for example uh, the the concrete industry in Monterrey uh, was converted into a non fresh water in all the cities so the industry in Monterrey helped the city and the community to get access to the water that they could use. And well, something important is that we're trying to start using some equi equi equivalences of the numbers that we have, because for example, when we say uh, we are saving 100 kilograms of CO2, I don't know how, how I don't imagine how it see as 100 kilograms of CO2. So we are trying to give some equivalences for the people can understand better uh, what we are doing in, in the concrete industry. So uh, those uh, two billion liters of water are equivalent of uh, something like that. Is for example the consumption of the all the Semex Mexico employees in four years. So uh, it, it starts to contributing something uh, to the community. The use of uh, clean energy, uh, trying to decarbonize in the, the concrete batching plants. Uh, we are trying to get uh, our energy supply from eolic and solar plants in Mexico. We have uh, in standby in this government uh, the, the, the increasing the, the, the number of the clean energy plants in Mexico, but we already have a lot of clean energy plants in Mexico, so 
we are trying in the concrete industry to get access to those kinds of, of energy. So, for example, in, in Mexico, the, the half of the facilities of the concrete plants are already supplied by eolic plants. So, w w in the concrete plants, we are not so intensive using of electric, electric energy, but the, the quantity that we are using, we are trying to replace by uh, clean energy. Well, and we are uh, e equipped our plants with uh, solar panels, for example, for those facilities which hasn't need too much energy, for example, offices or the, the security room or all that kind of facility which doesn't need too much energy was supplied by this kind of, of technologies. So uh, in the use of uh, other type of vehicles that don't use uh, diesel, um, we are trying to, to migrate to a natural gas uh, mixer trucks. They have been proven that they could give or deliver the same result than any other type of, of mixer. We are evaluating the, the electric ones, but it uh, seems that uh, the performance of this kind of mixer are, are the same than any other uh, mixer truck. So we are trying to replace all the fleet in, in Mexico. There is uh, a lot of companies which offer these solutions in Mexico, and it's uh, a very, very nice uh, effort that uh, we are doing. There is another type of effort that uh, one enterprise in Mexico start to um, to implement into the market. It was uh, uh, support by some local governments, like the Mexico City government, which in their uh, laws uh, start to establish the use of the uh, construction and demolition waste to uh, use it again in the fabrication of produ or, or, or production of, of new concrete. So we're trying to uh, enable the, 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 the legislation and the building codes that uh, has the enough information to use the concrete waste or the demolition waste. We are uh, aware that we can use it in all concretes. Um, more or less, if uh, I could give you numbers to have an idea, in Mexico, the ready mix concrete industry, uh, from the total amount of uh, concrete that uses in Mexico, it only represents like a 30, 40 percent tops, and the rest, 50 and 60 percent, is concrete made in, in on site with the cement bags, with the receipt that the, the grandfather could give to the person. And, well, this, this could be a, a, an issue, right? So, from uh, these 30, 40 percent that the ready mix industry in Mexico has, more or less a half of that percent represent the special concretes. Special concretes I refer as self-consolidating concretes, uh, high strength concretes, um, fiber reinforced concretes, uh, color concretes, etc., etc. Those concretes, uh, most of the times, have uh, different admixtures, additional additions, uh, which maybe can't uh, be used to recycle for other concretes. So we are trying to develop uh, technologies and other admixtures that allow us to recycle all type of concrete produced that we could uh, crush and use it again as aggregates. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm going uh, now to mention some of uh, the products that we have promoting in Mexico, no, no, not only Cemex, there is uh, uh, more than one company in, uh, in Mexico that have available these products that I will uh, show you. For example, low carbon concrete. We have in, at the ACI, we already have a, a code for low carbon concrete. In Mexico, we just have the new version of the building code of Mexico City, which already mentioned the use of low carbon concrete. And the code has a definition, and they mention in which cases we can use this concrete. So it is available in, in, in the Mexican market. They have a lot of uh, attributes, but to give you some idea what uh, does the low carbon concrete 
represents in sustainability benefits is something like this. Six cubic meters of low carbon concrete represent uh, a little bit, a little more, what the, the CO2 that 14 trees can absorb during 10, 10 years. There is a lot of offers and products in the market, but any of those can help us to reduce the, the, the CO2 emissions in the concrete. Another type of effort, what I mentioned before, is the uh, eliminate the waste of our plants. So we are trying to deploy a series of strategies to eliminate this waste. So we are trying to convert the waste into a subproduct, and we can use it not only to fabricate new concrete, uh, instead to use it in other elements in our construction, like a base for pavements, we can mix it with the soil and use it in, uh, in the base of the structure of the pavement. So we are trying to uh, make a process of dehydrate the return concrete. Uh, once uh, the, the reject or the return concrete comes to the plant, they start a process with the loader to extend the concrete into the soil in a, in a sand uh, bed, let's say, and we let the concrete uh, dehydrate. And then the, the, the loader goes and take all the, the material and, and pass it to, uh, for the screen and can separate the, the sizes of the, of the product and we can start using again as an aggregate. There is an, an admixture which allows to pelletize the concrete. We can add this admixture into the mixer and the admixture will pelletize the concrete and then we can release it as aggregate again. Uh, we're uh, crushing the, hard the hardened concrete. We can use it as aggregate or we can uh, use it in the cement plant also. We are trying to get uh, the carbonicide raw material to fabricate the cement uh, again. So during, during the last year in the concrete industry in Mexico, we have recycled more than 30,000 tons of concrete and we produce more than 100,000 cubic meter of this kind of, of, of concrete. So the market and the clients and the customers start demanding these types of, uh, uh, of products. So at the beginning, they always ask if it was uh, of it is expensive than the normal Congress. At, at the very beginning, they don't want to buy this kind of products because they are uh, with a little extra cost. But nowadays, I could tell you that in Mexico, the low carbon concrete doesn't have any extra charge. The, the, the price of this concrete is the same that any other concrete, so the, the customers doesn't have the, the need to ask for a low carbon concrete. If they ask concrete, they will receive low carbon concrete. This is uh, some numbers, just uh, what it meant, the, the, the sales of the low carbon concrete in Mexico. It was used in more than 35,000 projects, and it helped to reduce more than 1.2 million tons of CO2 uh, per cubic meter. Mm -hmm. There is another kind of concretes that um, they are producing uh, in Mexico. So one of them is uh, what I told you, the using of alternative water or uh, non-fresh water that replace 100% of the water of the mix. But there is another type of concretes that using other type of waste or the other industries waste as a pet or as a tire, uh, crush uh, this raw material and, and put it in, in, into, the, into the concrete. So we are using also the artificial plastic aggregate, as I mentioned before. And well, there is a, a, a some projects already that uh, have already used this, uh, this type of concrete. We're trying to... Uh, make available to the customers some alternatives to different uses of different types of concretes. So many times the market of the customers doesn't be aware uh, about the other benefits that the concrete school give them. 
thinking in sustainability. For example, in human factors, with the concrete technology that we have developed already, we can use the concrete in almost any element of the projects. So we can use it in the floors, in uh, walls, in the slabs, and we can leave the concrete uh, apparent or exposed. So uh, using this kind of strategy, we can, uh, we can uh, have the choice to not to use, for example, some uh, paints or, or some sealers that almost, or most of the times has BOCs or, or volatile or organic compounds which uh, through the time it could damage the health of the people. So if we use instead those materials, the concrete as an architectural element, we can save all the, those exposure to the BOCs. So we have color concrete, we have uh, uh, concretes with textures, uh, we have a lot of examples of the use of architectural concrete to reduce uh, those uh, environmental impacts that most of the materials in the construction has. And uh, we are trying to make an, a strong commitment to be transparent in, in the industry. We are uh, trying, uh, most of the industries and companies in Mexico are make, making this uh, commitment to, 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 to publish our environmental impacts. So we are working in, in, in the generation, in the environmental product declarations, in health product declarations. Uh, we want to have the laboratory reports of other types of measures in the concrete that before we are just using the, the, the information from the book. For example, the, the, the quantity of volatile organic compounds in the, in, in the concrete or the solar refracted index. Uh, and uh, in addition of the third party documents that uh, be certificate, we're trying to give the information that the customer needs to take a, de a decision before the, the project. Uh, what I mean is since they request a quotation, we are uh, inform him the quantity of CO2 that the concrete will generate to their project. So through these documents, they could take the better decision of which of the materials will give the less environmental impact. We are working also on training. We are uh, aware that most of the sustainable uh, effort that we should make as concrete industry is that the, the, all the, the, the stakeholders and all the, the group of interest in the industry should know why we are doing this. So we have been designed some uh, courses, some training to give them and they could sensibilize uh, of, of why, we are, why we are doing that and why they should follow this kind of efforts. We have some CO2 calculators online to uh, explore the impact of the, uh, of, of the projects. Um, this, this calculator, this tool is online and is by type of concrete, by, uh, by region, by city, and they can uh, play with the dates, uh, with the information they have in this uh, tool. And we have been uh, publishing some documents to explain a little, a little bit um, uh, the CO2 issue, the climate change, why is the, 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 this kind of solutions comes to the industry. And just to finish, I will show you very quickly some examples of where we are using this different type of uh, products. For example, uh, concrete with PET, with crushed PET. We, um, in, in, in Ensenada, Baja California, uh, a mall made their benches and some stairs with this kind of plastic. If you can see in the right uh, pictures, you can see the plastic in, in, in the surface of the concrete. The baseball stadium in Mexico City, all the parking lot was uh, built with a recycled concrete. 
uh, with the concrete uh, result of the demolition of the ancient uh, uh, structure in the same area of the stadium, it was the demo it was uh, demolated and took into a quarry to get crushed and then uh, take to the concrete plant to produce new concrete. For example, concrete with crushed tires. We have built uh, all the the roads or all the pavements of all uh, from all the housing community. It was more than uh, for 40,000 square meter of this type of concrete. For some of the um, uh, rail yards in a Volkswagen Mexico plant was built with this type of concrete also uh, in Puebla and in other plant they have in uh, Guanajuato. Um, we have been designed uh, an example of how cool all these technologies go together in just one piece. And this was uh, a bench designed by the Carlos Barba architect and uh, calculated by the engineer Esteban Astudillo, present here, uh, to see how these technologies go, go how could we get together. So, for example, it, it was for, for a architectural uh, design week in Mexico. This bench was built with a ultra low carbon concrete which reduced 90% the CO2 emission. It was constructed with a geopolymer or a alternative cement. It, it, it wasn't a, a Portland cement, it was other type of cement. We uh, made it with alternative water. We put a crushed pet, we put crushed concrete, we use artificial aggregates, and also we use photoluminescent aggregates. That means that it could bright uh, when, when we have a light. Mm -hmm. Other kind of uh, uh, projects we have been built with this uh, strategies, the Torre Coy, uh, until no so much it was the tallest building in Mexico. We built this uh, building with a high strength concrete and with uh, keeping in mind that the use of this kind of concrete we can we, we allow us to decrease the dimension of the columns of almost all the building. So at the end, with this strategy, we, we could reduce uh, a little bit more of 65 tons of CO2 just to use a concrete of uh, 50 megapascal, 70 meg megapascal, instead uh, other high strength like uh, 40 megapascal. Other type of uh, projects using, for example, lightweight concretes to increase the, the energy efficient of the building. We uh, built two houses. At the first time, this, this building was designed to use uh, ma masonry. And we made the proposition to build with concrete. So it was built two houses, one with, with the masonry and other with the, with the concrete. This house is, was, uh, is located in La Paz, in Baja California, very near from uh, Los Cabos, which has a, a desert weather. So once the house was built, we measured the temperature, and we found a difference of temperature, temperature of five Celsius between each house. Uh, obviously, the more fresh house is the house which built with concrete. So when you see in this, uh, uh, these houses in this type of weather, the reduction of five Celsius degrees is a huge amount of savings in the using of air conditioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, this project is in Mexico City, is one of the tallest buildings in Mexico City. And uh, this building has, uh, from the four facades, Two of them is with glass, and the other two is just concrete. It's like an enormous concrete wall in, in two of uh, its facades. And it was complete, uh, completed in 2016, but the people think that uh, they already not yet done because they see the concrete and think that it's a work ongoing. 
But no, the, 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 the design is that the concrete was uh, exposed in, in the phacite. But when we made some uh, calculations and some estimations about how, how much we save by not using or not use of paintings, we have the number of 100,000 kilograms of CO2 reduced by not using paint. And the economic cost to not paint almost 4,000 square meters was uh, a, a hit for this uh, for this building, mm -hmm. and uh, at least uh, another type of projects that we are showing the, the benefit of the concrete uh, instead other materials is in payments. Uh, one of the main uh, highways inside Mexico City was re rehabilitated. Usually, it was from uh, made in, in asphalt. It was rehabilitated to concrete. And when we are made in this uh, rehabilitation, we, we, we took this thermography. And I think you can see the difference between the temperature they have in, in, in the surface. If you see, you can see in the asphalt surface a temperature of 51 Celsius degree. And in the concrete surface, you will see a 31. There is 20. Celsius degree of difference of temperature between those uh, surfaces. So if you uh, should walk in one of these two surfaces, which one would you like to be walking? So uh, thinking that we made a life cycle analysis between one kilometer of pavement between asphalt and concrete, and at the end, in a 50 years cycle, uh, we saw that one uh, square meter of concrete uh, versus asphalt can reduce 55 kilograms of CO2 per each uh, square meter. When I have to uh, calculate the area of one of the highways of any city in the United States, we could reach a huge amount of reduction of CO2 using concrete. And just to finish, uh, I would like to make some closing remarks uh, that we are seeing in Mexico about uh, put uh, the concrete as the principal uh, actors in this uh, challenge of the climate change. And is that the sustainable development is the main challenge today, and the construction industry is key to reach the targets and, and the goals that we uh, are facing. Concrete is the second most used materials, and the concrete there no have substitute for its attributes. The solution is not to finish with the concrete, it's how to use it smarter. It is necessary to exercise leadership as concrete industry and commitment to achieve these uh, changes. Innovation is key to, to, to achieving our goals. There is many things that we have an idea how we will solve. So we need to work to find these, these, these solutions. Uh, we must embrace the challenge as consumers, not, not only as professionals or not, not only as companies. As personal side, we have to take this challenge in our daily lives. The collaboration in companies uh, which forms all the sector, designers, architects, engineers, other industries, academia, NGOs are essential for the future. And we have to clear path to follow to achieve the goals that we have made. Thank you so much. <laughs>